Hello, good day and welcome back. So today I'm going to show you how to manipulate the number of <clears throat> OS threads, excuse me, that are available to your Google, um, to your application. Now, in the previous video, this video is not going to make much sense if you don't watch the previous video from section 10, where I go over how Go routines compare to OS threads. And there we saw that uh, one OS thread can run many Go routines. And so, of course, there could be a number of OS threads allocated to run your Go program. Uh, we didn't talk about it in detail, but I've been saying that uh, your application, when you build your Go application, there's some C code bundle with it, which is like the Go runtime, and that manages the execution of your Go code. Now, way back when we started this, I said that our Go applications are statically compi compiled, which means that our and linked. So they don't depend on any other library. Once you have a Go executable, you can just put it on a system and run it for that system. It doesn't need anything else. So all this managing of Go routine that I've been talking about, this happens because all the scheduling and everything you need to create Go routines and manage them um, is done as part of the bundled runtime, the Go runtime, okay? All right, so now we wanna see how can you control the number of OS threads available to your Go runtime and see if that has any, um, what should I say, any effect on how your code run. So I figured that one place that we can possibly start is to, uh, let me mute this, I'm sorry about that. Uh, all right, all right, so one place we can possibly start is by understanding with this Go prop max. So if you go to, uh, you you know, start just search for GoPro Max. Uh, one of the first two links I found uh, is from the Go Runtime um, library package, and this this Cheney um, thing. And so if you open that and you read it, it's tell you for this runtime package, it says the GoPro variable limits the number of operating system threads that can execute UV level Go code simultaneously. Okay, and if you jump down here, you're gonna see um, it says. Um, this package, go max prac function, queries and changes this limit. Okay, and so if you come here, you can see that this is a function that if you pass in a number, it sets it to that number and then it returns the previous value it was set to. What it means is that if you were to call this in a program, if you wanted to know how many um, OS threads are available to your Go program, you can just call this runtime that go max prac function and it would return you. The, what, what that's set to and of course you have to pass in an int which is a new value but if that int is less than zero is less than one which means like zero for example it would not change it so we can do a quick test here we can say let's just make um, a project diary called chapter 08 section 11 and we're going to do code of course and we're going to create a little program to try and see if we can figure out what is the default um, value and so we're gonna do main.go and then of course package main and then func main and so we do fmt that print line and we're gonna say number of os threads right uh, threads and then we're gonna do runtime that um, go max proc right now this is a function call i don't want to change whatever the current is um, let's say the current is one. I don't want to pass in two, for example, or if the current is 20,000, whatever. I don't have that many cores, but whatever. We'll see. And so so it's going to return me um, the number of things. So I'm going to run this now. So I'm going to say go run main. And you can see here on my system, it says it's eight is the default. Okay. Um, it's being called with eight. And I can verify that. And I know that's correct because if I do top of my system or H top, you can see I have. Um, four cores here and four cores over there. So I have hit cores on this machine And if you look at my previous video, I said it doesn't really matter how I get eight cores Whether that's four actual CPUs two cores each or eight actual CPUs one core each or just one CPU Eight cores, you know any number of ways you can do those multiples, right? Um, so the important thing is I have eight cores and go runtime is allocating eight cores to um, my um, thing all right all right, and eight cores are being allocated to my core runtime. All right, so now we know that's good. So let's go back now to chapter, um, to section six, okay? And there we had this program was like this. So we said do go run main. 
And here we had, we created two thousand two hundred thousand go routines, had them queued up and waiting. And then at the end we stuff a um, cat main. And then at the end, after we created the two hundred thousand go routines here, and we know that's the case because n is two hundred thousand there, and we loop around create those go routines, and then at the end, after we've created them, after we've created them, then we send zero down at a um, into one channel and then that caused the other go routine to you know read it add one to it or whatever and then end right so how long does this take so if you're on a unix like system mac included linux um you type time and then you know uh, go run for example main um, it's going to tell you how long that takes to run now I don't want to keep compiling this and run it, so that's not going to tell me the real time because it's going to spend some time compiling. So I'm going to build it. So I'm going to say go build. And so now this gives me an executable. And so now I'm going to say time, you know, this guy. And so we see it takes here 1.76 seconds to run this application, right? To run these 200,000 um, thing. So one way of checking to see, we know it out, this is with eight course because on my system it says that's going to be the default so let's see if we were to set it to one how this would change things right um so let's do that um so bum, 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 um uh, let me see all right so i'm gonna do bash because um i'm using zsh and it's acting silly okay so i'm gonna say go max prox one equals one and then I'm gonna say time that you know this guy and run it and so now you can see it says it takes about 1.2 <laughs> it doesn't look it's not looking good for the default here right and then let's do two and it says real time is eight three okay so about half right and then let's do but we can run it again to see if we come in about the same time, right? And you can, you have to run this a couple of times. So you could see all these with two, it's coming in um, under one second, right? Whereas when it was one, um, I could run it a couple of times and you see it's always coming in over one second. So about 120 something, 130, right? So it's already close to um, 1.25, right? All right. And so when I did two, it was certainly about half that, right? So we could kind of see, I'm um, not quite half, but you get the idea, right? Um, so what about four? Are we going to be much better off with four? And so again, you could see with four, again, it's coming in consistently on the 70. And before when it was two, it was coming in consistently on the, that nine, right? All right. So what about eight? And so a little bit better, but not that much better. And so this um, might seem counterintuitive, but eventually it's not linear. Uh, just because the more processes you have doesn't mean that oh, it just keep halfway if you just keep doubling your processes because there's some overhead from management, okay? So you're gonna start topping out at a certain point. It doesn't matter how many cores you throw at it or CPUs, it, it just doesn't matter anymore. And so, um, and so, Hopefully, this demonstrates to you that uh, certainly allocating more core up to a certain point uh, will certainly make your code run better. Now, I can totally say I want to do 10 here or something, but I don't have 10 cores, so it, it, it kind of doesn't matter what I say after that point, right? All right, so that's pretty much um, it. I just wanted to show you how you can manipulate the number of um, OS threads that you allocate to your go run time. Um, here, you can also go read um, a little bit more about that variable. Um, as you can see, it says as of go 1.5, the default value of go proc max is the number of CPUs, whatever your operating system considered to be CPUs. So that could be hyper threads or whatever, um, which are not real cores, but oh well. And so at the end of the day, it's going to be set to the max. So you're always going to be able to use the maximum number of cores available in your system. So you really don't have to be messing with this. This is more for a demonstration purpose to just show you that the threads do affect the running of your Go um, run application as we have talked about it yesterday. All right. Take care. Thanks. See you in the next video. Uh, okay. Bye.